Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and welcome to the Insider Exclusive. Today, I am pleased to present the law firm of Proskauer Rose, board member of the California Women's Law Center, and also on our Southern California's Premier Law Firm series. Stay tuned. California has some of the best laws in the country, but those laws are no good if they're on the books, but women don't know about them. And we've worked in communities that are underserved, and in some cases have put together books to talk about women's and girls' rights in their own language so that they can understand it and seek to enforce those rights. I've been very fortunate throughout my career to be able to spend some of the time that we all have helping organizations and individuals who otherwise don't have the resources to have you know, what I've been very fortunate to have, which is a very good college education and a very good law school yes. education. And my guest on our show is Lois Thompson. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. I understand you're a partner at Proskow Rose, right? Correct. And tell us a little bit about the type of practice that you have at your firm. I'm what's called a litigator, but I really think of myself as a trial lawyer Good. or someone who deals with resolving disputes. Mm -hmm. And I've been very fortunate in my life that I've gotten to represent a large number of industries and individuals in a number of different areas. So I do some work involving real estate, some work involving insurance, some work involving securities laws. One of the big cases or events that you were involved with had to do, deal with the World Trade Center, didn't it? Yes, it did. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how it was resolved? Yes. Tell us what the problem was well, first. Well, as we all unfortunately well remember, on September 11, 2001, the World Trade Center was effectively destroyed. And I represented Larry Silverstein, who was one of the what we call lessors. He was actually responsible for reconstructing the Twin Towers and the other buildings at the World Trade Center. And in order to start that process, he needed to get insurance money. And we represented him in litigating against the insurance companies. There was a problem. I think the insurance company's position was um, that the two buildings that were destroyed were one incident. And I believe the insurance company that they were negotiating, the insurance um, contract that they were negotiating uh, basically would pay only 3.2 billion dollars on one incident, right? As opposed to if it was two incidents, he'd have 6.4 billion dollars. We said that two planes hitting two buildings and ca causing two collapses and two fires was two occurrences. Right. The insurance companies said no. One of the real problems that existed in our case was that the insurance policy had not yet been issued. I mean, it's sort of like when you drive off a car lot and you've got a binder for your car yes. and later the insurance policy arrives in the mail. Well, we were in the same circumstance as somebody who had a binder on the car, except that what we had were about 24 binders because that's the number of insurance companies that were involved. So how did they finally come to terms? And I think they settled it for what, like five or almost six billion dollars? What it involved was some of the insurance companies with whom we litigated were found to have been responsible only for one occurrence because yes. of the language in their binders, but others were responsible for two. Now, I'm just kind of curious. This money covers the reconstruction right? Correct. Of the building. The government is not putting any money towards that. Well, the Port Authority. The Port Authority is contributing and mm -hmm. certainly there are other ways in which the government is making it possible to right. try and get this process going because as we all know it's gone slower than we would like sure. it to have but it is now really moving forward. So we expect to break ground when? Oh, ground has been broken. Okay. The Freedom Tower is going up yes. and other work is going forward on the site right now even as we're speaking. I'm just kind of curious. There were a lot of shops or a lot of retail shops and businesses. Um, they obviously had claims against their insurance company. How did those things settle out? Well, actually, we were involved with those as well because the same insurance policy covered the commercial space and the retail space. Mm -hmm. And there were. It was, 
as of September 11th, it was the largest indoor mall in you know, that part of the world, and right. it was all destroyed. But it is also going to be rebuilt. I understand you also get involved a lot with trademark and patent disputes, too. What are some of your experiences and cases in those areas? Well, it's, mu it's less patent, more trademark. Mm -hmm. And it's been disputes over everything from cases involving trademarks on gloves used for weightlifting, mm -hmm. through disputes about automobiles, through disputes about some products that have been used for weight loss over the right. years. So it's a wide variety. And uh, I also understand you get involved with securities work, representing companies that have problems with the SEC. Yes. And it, again, it's a range of things from investigations that we do for the companies when a shareholder says that they believe something has gone wrong to work involving some of the recent things that we've seen in the news concerning the backdating or alleged backdating of stock options, right. working directly with the companies in dealing with the SEC and in responding to lawsuits that have been brought by shareholders. Part of your responsibility at your law firm is to prosecute or to represent people vigorously in the court, in the courtroom, as a, you know, as a trial attorney. But you also have another practice, which is alternative dispute resolution, don't you? Correct. How do you steer people in that direction? How do you persuade them to go in that direction as opposed to going in the courtroom? Well, it's a combination of things. I mean, often a, when a lawsuit begins, people stander is up and they're right. angry, and you often need to sit with them and work with them and talk about the fact that waiting years, which is unfortunately sometimes the case to get an, an issue resolved, rather than seeing whether it can be resolved through arbitration or mm -hmm. mediation, may not be the best way to go. And in fact, we as a firm have committed that to the extent that it makes sense, we will urge our clients to try and see whether they can resolve their disputes. And we do a lot of work with mediators and arbitrators. And in fact, in the World Trade Center case, some of the issues were mediated. And ultimately, while there were a lot of decisions that were made by judges in court, the final resolution came through the parties actually negotiating, and that work was facilitated by the governor and the superintendent of insurance who helped mediate the dispute. So you actually hire uh, mediators and people on the outside, uh, unbiased people supposedly, that can help you mediate the result, right? Absolutely. And that's binding, of course, too, isn't it? The mediation is binding, yes. Um, being at a large law firm, and you are at Proskow Rose, it's one of the best law firms in Los Angeles in the country. Um, a lot of your lawyers are involved with pro bono activities, aren't they? Absolutely. They are because they want to be, and beyond that, the firm really encourages them to do so. We take on a lot of matters as a firm because we believe it's in the public interest to do so, and we encourage people to take on matters and also to serve on boards of nonprofit organizations. Right. No, and, and for yourself, for example, and I, I think this is rather important because a lot of people have the wrong image of lawyers. You have a talent, you have a skill, and you use it successfully, and you contribute a lot of your time to a one particular organization, which is the California Women's Law Center, correct? Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, this is an organization that was started about 20 years ago, and what it tries to do is educate girls and women about their rights so that they're able to appropriately assert them, mm -hmm. and also to advocate in the courts and in the public forums to make sure that rights are enforced mm -hmm. and expanded where appropriate. So for example, what are your typical activities, the organization's activities, and they deal with the community? Individual women, women as a group, what do you, what well, do, you do with them? It really, well, let me start with what they do. Yeah. And it really is women as a group in the sense that we're not an organization like the Legal Aid Society mm -hmm. that directly represents women and girls who have problems. But what we do is we work on a broader scale with such organizations and with community groups to educate women. So that, for example, we've had numbers of focus groups to see what's necessary with respect to reproductive rights. Okay. California has some of the best laws in the country, but those laws are no good if they're on the books, but women don't know about 
adopt them. And we've worked in communities that are underserved, the Guatemalan community in the city of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. some of the Muslim community, Thai community, the Japanese community, obviously the Hispanic community, and in some cases have put together books to talk about women's and girls' rights in their own language so that they can understand it and seek to enforce those rights. What are some of the rights that they are unaware of? Well, it's everything from recognizing that within California um, there is a right to abortion okay. and that within California there are organizations that are available both to counsel mm -hmm. as to whether it's appropriate in, in a given case and also to assist in finding low-cost medical services, um, also with respect to uh, birth control, the same kinds of things. And one of the other things that we found, and this is another issue that California Women's Law Center has been focused on, is that unfortunately one of the instances that we have seen of domestic violence is in some households where, where women want to have some birth control because they have more children than they think they can then support economically or emotionally, sometimes their spouses or significant others disagree and we have found that those are areas uh, where sometimes there is domestic violence. Mm. So we've also worked to provide information to women and to the communities about resources and to work with the police departments so that they recognize and can respond appropriately in those kinds of circumstances. What drove you to work with this center? a combination of things. I think I've always been interested in women's issues. I went to a women's college and have always been very aware of the fact that we are still in this country, notwithstanding the advances we've made, in a situation where women often do need a little additional attention, a little additional encouragement. Uh, and that's one reason. Um, the other is that I have a daughter who's now 26, mm -hmm. but as I watched her grow up, I was very mindful of the fact that things like, for example, girl sports are very important. And Title IX of one of our federal laws provides that there should be no discrimination against girls or women in educational programs, including athletic programs. And the use of their facilities. And the use of their facilities. Right. And that's one of the things that I drove me to work with the California Women's Law Center because it's very much involved in Title IX issues. Your organization successfully won a lawsuit, I think, against, was it Alhambra? Correct. Alhambra High School that yes. built a $3 million facility for the guys. Mm -hmm and wouldn't let the women use it, is that right? Well, it's, uh, all these things are always a little more subtle yeah. than that, but essentially, yes, that it was a mismatch of I'm, facilities I'm, between the young men and the young women. Yeah, I'm amazed that the, the school administration even allowed that to develop like that. Well, sometimes schools themselves don't recognize yeah. what their obligations are. You know, yes. And you know, to be fair to them, you know, the school system is under a lot of pressure in a lot of different areas mm -hmm. and sometimes people don't realize that the same laws that apply to the colleges where we've heard more about the issue of equal facilities also apply to the high schools and sometimes you need a lawsuit to get people's attention and get them focused and get the right thing done. There's quite a few law firms that are on the board that help facilitate these lawsuits, yes, aren't yes, there? Yes. A lot of women, too. Yes. Which brings up another point, okay? I read recently that a lot of women are no longer looking to be lawyers. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? In terms of law school enrollment, enrollment, numbers of women are still going into the law schools, but there is a real challenge, and yes. my law firm recognizes it, and many of the other major law firms recognize it, that we really do need to be much more focused on the issue of what we call work-life balance sure. and try and do what we can to make sure that young women coming into law firms know that uh, the law firms are supportive when it comes to that period in their lives when they have children and raise children. Mm -hmm. But certainly it is, it's a challenge for the profession. You would say part of the great uh, thing about being a lawyer for you is being able to contribute your talents to helping organizations like the Women's Law Center. 
Absolutely. California Women's Law Center. Absolutely. Um, I think it's incumbent on all of us, and I've been very fortunate throughout my career, to be able to spend some of the time that we all have helping organizations and individuals who otherwise don't have the resources to have you know, what I've been very fortunate to have, which is a very good college education and a very good law school yes. education. Yes, and you've given back. Well, I think it's important that we all do. Well, I want to thank you very much for being on the show. It's been a real pleasure. Keep up the good work. Thank you. It's and we're going to have you back again. Thank you. Thank you for watching our show. We've enjoyed having you. You can get more information on our shows at InsiderExclusive.com. Thank you.